All right, this is One Last Midnight, and welcome back to another episode of Astroneer. Excuse the holy shirt, but today is gardening day. <laughs> at any rate, today we're going to look at how to automate the shredder so that you can make that scrap. And then also, I've tied in an automatic trade platform resource gathering concept as well. In this video, I'm not going to do a build list and a resource list nor power guide because, look, it's just way too much stuff. You're gonna to have to put down a ton of stuff and a ton of power. So let's just put that in your mind. But what I will do is I'll walk you through both processes so that you guys can reproduce this build. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Here's the build for running an automatic shredder. Full automation is set up by having some thumpers and let's pretend that this is Malachite having some thumpers off into the distance and instead of having storage attached you have these auto arms pulling from the auto extractors i called them thumpers but the auto extractors that would be 100 percent full automation now let me tell you why i don't like that the resources underneath the auto extractors are not infinite so they're going to run out and if you wind up making this entire setup right next to some resource deposit at some time in the future that resource deposit will go dry and then look at all of the stuff that you either need to shred or move to the next location so to me that's not really a great idea while you can do 100% full automation, I don't recommend doing it. So what I think full automation would look like is taking the resources that come from the auto extractors and then putting them through this process. Now I have two different storages. I have some medium resource canisters and I have some large resource canisters. The size of the resource canisters that you put your resources in are irrelevant. The process is what really matters. Now, this is a little bit dirty because I have button repeaters all over the place. This is because of the auto arm issue. And I wanted a, the ability to turn this machine on and off with one single button. And so that's why you have all of these connections laying around with the button repeaters. The only thing that you need to automate this process is a storage sensor on a timer to run the printers. So go back to the video that I did on automatic printing and you'll, you'll see some similarities with the timer and how the printers are configured. Let me walk you through this build. Let's get it started. To start this build initially, you would take your medium resource canisters or whatever storage you have and you would put them to output mode. These two auto arms pick up the resources from the resource canister or whatever storage you have and then place them onto the smelting furnace. The smelting furnace then does its job and these two auto arms pick up the refined copper and place them on this temporary large platform B so that the printers can use them. Now let's go ahead and turn on this timer. And this timer you'll notice is a lot shorter than the other timers that we have used in the past. We were using a silo instead of a medium storage. And the reason why is because what we are creating is extenders. And the print process for extenders are very quick. So you don't need to have a very long timer to wait for the printers to become free. Then you have an auto arm that picks up the finished product and drops it off into the large shredders. To make this a little bit more efficient because each shredder can only hold two items, I have two shredders in place. Finally, we have one single auto arm in the back to turn around and take the scrap from the shredders and put it onto some interim storage. Now, why are we doing extenders? Well, extenders equal one item of scrap. So one extender will produce you one item of scrap. Now you could use the button repeater and the button repeater only takes one zinc, but when shredded, it only produces, I believe, either a quarter or a half of scrap. It wasn't worth me finding out because I tried it once and it was so little that I, would, I didn't even bother with it from there on out. So the extenders are really the best solution to produce scrap. So it's a one for one. 
So if you do the math, you have 400 pieces of malachite in that large container over there. That would equal 400 pieces of scrap. And you could see that the scrap is being produced rather quickly. Now, in order to turn all this off, if you have set up a button repeater, all you would do is switch the button off. And so any items that were remaining to be scrapped will be scrapped. I did remove the button repeater from here because as I'm recording this video, I decided, hey, look, if there's items that are sitting there waiting, I want them to be processed through the large shredders. The other way to turn this off as well is just disconnect this uh, pin from the storage and this will stop the timer for the printers. Now, the other half of this is let's say you have scrap that's being produced and you automatically want to trade for some sort of resource in this case i have it set up to ammonium and we're going to store the ammonium in these two medium resource canisters of course you could also store it into a large resource canister if you have a large resource canister around now while i'm producing scrap i have this section disconnected you don't have to have it disconnected you could have it running constantly but if you don't have eight items of scrap you're going to send off a partial load from the trade platform instead of a full load from the trade platform so i like to do this separately but it's absolutely possible to have this all running at the same time automatic scrapping and automatic trade platform so if I hook the power up and turn these auto arms on, what they're going to do is they're automatically going to fill up the trade platform. And this is going to wait for the final output. Now, if we come over to the timer, the timer is a little bit different. You'll see that the timer is seriously extended. I've got four of these timers and I have them chained. And so the way that this works is once this becomes full or empty, it's going to fire off a signal to the next timer, which is then going to start, which is going to fire off a signal to the next timer, which will fire off a signal to the next timer. And finally, it'll get to this point where it'll start the process all over again and also send a signal to the trade platform. Why did I set this up? Well, the trade platform actually takes 50 plus seconds from launch to land. And so you need a long timer in order to be able to time this process. We want this to be able to launch, go up into space, get resources, come back down, and then have it offload and reload back up before we send a signal to the trade platform again to start the process all over again. So let me show you how this works. Like I said, this is a long timer. It takes about a minute and 30 seconds for this entire timer to complete. And so let's wait till it's almost completed and we can see what happens with the trade platform. All right, the timer is almost complete. So this final storage is going to send off a signal back to this storage to start the process all over again. And we'll also send off a signal for the trade platform and the trade platform will launch. Now the timer is already started and it's filling up these storages all over again. And so by the time that it gets to about the second timer firing off its signal, the trade platform will come back. And then the auto arms will start its loading and unloading process. Trade platforms coming back. It has resources for me. The auto arms will start unloading and the other auto arm will start loading. Now the timer is still running in the background. And so by the time that this is finished unloading with a couple seconds as a buffer, it will then send off the trade platform and start the process all over again. The auto arms have completed their job and now the storage is about to send off a signal sending off the trade platform for another round. And this process will continue as long as you have scrap on your storage. Shutting this process off is pretty easy. All you have to do is disconnect this one pin and then also turn off the auto arm. And so when the trade platform comes back, it will no longer fill it up with scrap. It will only unload the trade platform and it's ready to go again all you have to do is reconnect that storage back up and turn the auto arm back on again if you watched my video on automated printing we had set up this configuration 
which is producing medium resource canisters purely off of soil. Now, there's no change in this process. It works exactly the way that it did in the automated printing video. I am producing quartz, which is then producing glass, which is then getting delivered over to the printer on one half of the printer side. And this all over on the right hand side is producing organic, which is making carbon, which is sending it to the chemistry lab on one half. And the other half is turning around and making compound, which is sending it to the chemistry lab to make plastic. Then plastic is getting delivered back to the printers and the printers are printing out medium resource canisters. This is all done with soil. So as long as you have soil, this process will work. Now, the reason why that this is semi automation is because you have to unpackage the medium resource canisters, but medium resource canisters equal one item of scrap, just like the extenders do. But the difference is I'm not having to mine up a resource and smelt it. I'm producing it purely with soil. So if you don't mind having to unpackage items, when your storage is completely full, you just start shredding up these medium resource canisters and they will start producing scrap. Because you have to open up packages and you have to wait for the medium resource canister to actually shred, this process is not as fast as the first process we looked at, but it is another way to accomplish the same thing. All right, so that was my video on the automated shredder. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, hit that like button. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. We'd love to have you in the community. If you want to follow me on any of my social media, you can find the links in the description below and make sure to hit that notification bell. That way, you know when I go live and when I post new videos. Talk to you soon. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.